Dennis Law did the best one. Because when he scored, he lifted his armour. He had his sleeve pulled down. It was like this. <laughs> I what, Dad? It was like he was a kid playing football in the street, in the cold, in the rain. Sleeve was to wipe away snot, probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> rain, snot, football in the streets. Those were the days. Yeah, you watch it. Not taking the cab tonight, Dad? Uh, no. Where are you going tonight, then, son? I'm just hooking up with John. Well, you have a good time. Take care of yourself. We'll see you later on, all right? Night, right, Mum. Have fun. I might let you. This is a massive night out. Oh, John, not again. Yeah. All right. Bye. Uh -huh. Hey, hey. Sorry. Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. Um, I'm not a cab driver. Never mind. I could drop you somewhere. Where do you want to go? I have no idea. Why'd you stop? I didn't. I mean, I did, but not for you. Seaside. What? Where's near a seaside? You want to go to the seaside? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do it.
Whose is the cab? My dad's. He lets you use it? Yeah. No. You drive it without him knowing? Just this once. I'm shocked. Sorry. Why tonight? I don't know. Sometimes you just do things, don't you? <laughs> I felt happy. Ninety-nine, double flake, chocolate sauce, and hands from the houses, please. Uh, same. Please, thanks. You aren't happy the rest of the time? No, why? Just the way you said, I felt happy. I'm fine. Maybe I took the cab because I knew that out there was a mad girl who really, really badly wanted to go to the seaside. Thank you. Run. What? Run. Thanks. This is Saturday night at the seaside. It's wonderful. Oh, it's very wonderful, depending on the state of mind. Personally, I prefer very wonderful. I don't want to be alone tonight. No. Do you have a girlfriend? No. June? No. Don't have a boyfriend, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your name. I don't know yours. You gonna tell me? Do your mum and dad live here? My mum's dead. Sorry. It's all right. Your dad? He works nights. Drawer in the kitchen. Um, which one? Yeah, that one. The knife. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no way. Yes. <laughs> no. Go. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. No. Go on.
Okay, out you get, sir. Take it easy. We're at North Piano. What happened? Um, Byron Street. Um, I don't know what the units are available. I don't know. Um, okay, the call well. now. Have you been drinking this evening, sir? Oh, Cheery, we've right, got to go. Really, um, what? Two minutes away. Serious incident right now. No other units available. Our world's gone to a murder in Stock Hill. Put the boy in the car. Bravo Alpha 63 responding. What about the cab? We're leaving the cab, we're putting the kid in the car and we're going. All right, can you get in the car, please? It's all right. Where are we going? What incident? Please be quiet, young man. She did. What? Who? Can I do this? Where are you going? Bravo, 6 3. We're at TA'd at the scene. Constable Q694 is on his way in. Watch that. I'll come on its way. Are you the neighbour that put in the call? I lived with sir. Okay, well, someone will be along to interview you later. Okay. Don't get caught.
superintendent box. I get this sealed off. Nobody in a row unless I say so. What's he doing? Hey, 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 hey. This is a crime scene. What the hell are you doing throwing up all over my crime scene? Come here. Throw up in there. <laughs> Uh, who's out of here with the pit of call in? Sorry, sir. Yeah, never mind the sorries. I'll just sharp it up and answer the question. Oh, damn it, only RTA, sir. Suspects of drink drive. We've got the shout for this at the scene of the crash. Yeah. Did the right thing. No, focus. Yeah, I'll get back to one of here. What's in there? Uh, dead body, sir. Wound of the chest in the bedroom. The first floor, back room. Male or female? Female. Right, get your drink driver down to the neck. Process him, change your uniform. And good lad. is killing itself to keep up. Do you object to this married woman searching you? Thank you. Do the search. Yes, please, constable. Mr Coulter was found in his crash vehicle in Bowman Street. I arrested him on suspicion of drink driving. No, I didn't. I didn't get that far. Then you better arrest him now. Cheers. Oh, Governor, what's the score? Head female, knife wound to the chest. Sexual assault gone wrong, we think. Never saw a black cab leaving the scene. What was that, sir? Black cab, constable. So we're looking for a knife, a blade approximately an inch and a quarter. With a blade approximately an inch and a quarter wide. Where was he out here? Bowman Street. Okay. 135. What's your name? My name is Ben Coulter. Constable Geary? Yes, sir. Constable Geary. Arrest this man on suspicion of the murder of Melanie Lloyd. You've got no problem. Take it easy, son. You got your wrong. I didn't do it. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I can't breathe. If you're talking, you're breathing. Face against the wall. Off. Hands. No. Stop hiding us, Ben. Do this easy. Come on, it happens to all of us. We're seen, Ben, just like the house. We need everything we can get from a scene. Get the pants. <laughs>
And there's just one more thing we need from you. Do we have consent? What's happening? Consent for what? You can say no to this if you want to. My name's Dr. Gerard. I need to take a sample from inside your penis. If you say no, we'll have to get permission from my boss. And he'll say, yes, of course. It'll just take a bit longer. So it's good to happen anyway. And if you refuse now, it can be used against you in court. And I don't want you disadvantaged, Ben. You really can say no if you want to. Say the words for me, Ben. I consent. Do you want me to stay? Okay. Jump out of the suit and on your side, please. Will it hurt? Yes. Dad, try to listen. Get your hands off! Get your hands off! Murder, Dad. Just come, Dad. That's your lot, son. You need it. I've got to go. Here comes your man, Dad. In all his glory. My name is Stone. You the shut up. Good boy. What is it? That blinking thing you do. Some sort of tick, is it? I've seen some ticks in my time. They can be very endearing or they can go the other way and have a, a whiff of the psychopath about them. This tick I'm not so sure about. Erase for my eczema. I'm glad you're here. You're an asthmatic. Same family as eczema. Jury's love an asthmatic. The asthma killer. The sex brutal. Can't breathe very well. <laughs> Doesn't play, does it? Sex brute. Mm. That's what this lot be feeding the press with. She was. I'm going to tell you something, and it's the most important thing that you will hear in your entire life. So don't not hear it. What? Shut it. I I don't understand. They come up with their story. We come up with ours. The jury gets to decide which story they like best. The best story wins. Now, the good news for us is we get to hear what their story is before we have to tell them what ours is. So, we keep stung until we know what they're doing. Story? Why do you keep saying that? I want to tell you the truth. You really, really don't. I don't want to be stuck with the truth. But you need to know whether I'm guilty or innocent. I need to be flexible. Then I want somebody else. Fifteen years. What? Don't listen to this Daily Mail nonsense about early release. It's fifteen years. You will serve as a lifer. You know what? That's three years too long. Twelve years some people can do and come out with a, a chance of being a human being again. But fifteen? No. They've lost too much. You can see it in their eyes. The shop is shut. Winning is everything, Ben. Forget the truth. Now, oh, <laughs> the custody clock is ticking down. They have got 24 hours to charge or release you. So, we do everything <laughs> it really winds them up and the clock is ticking down. Ready? A cup of tea would be nice. No rush. 
You got no comment to every single question, except to agree they've got your name right. Now the judge will tell the jury that they can infer guilt from your silence, but I've been a no comment man all my work in life, and it has never let me down. You will give evidence. Our brief will ask you why you went no comment to the police station, and you tell them. Tell them what? That your hard no solicitor made you do it. The jury will look at you, nice boy, no form, a little bit of asthma, and they look at me, and they buy it. Why can't I? What's wrong with just telling them? This is their life, Ben. It's what they do every single day. You are at a massive disadvantage here. You have got to shut up until you know enough not to. And I really think you should lose the tick. Can you do that for me? <laughs> Good lad. Why did you try to get out of the police car? No comment. Were you running away? No comment. She fought you, didn't she? No comment. That's why you got injuries on your chest. You broke into her house and you sexually assaulted her and she fought like crazy for her life. No. No comment. Oh, Lord. Did your solicitor tell you to answer no comment? No comment. Is she dead? What? what are you talking about? Is she dead? That's what you said in the back of the police car, Ben. Do you recall saying that? You don't have to answer that. How did you know the deceased was a female? We haven't mentioned it. Nor have we said anything about anyone being dead. Don't call her that. What? <laughs> female, like she's an animal or something. Well, what should we call her? I don't know her name. Melanie. Are we going to find traces of Melanie all over you? Would you rather we called her the deceased female after all? Stop the tape. Your uniform. Yes. Why the hell are you doing this interview? Where are the detectives? I thought we were going to look quite well. Where is he? Where's Box? It's time with the body. The gold's an hour. Now, a good long look at the scene can tell you such a lot. Superintendent Box. 
You're not ready to talk to anyone, but there will come a time when you will want help. You will want answers. Call me. Cut out all the in-between and ring me up. Day or night, Mr. Boyd. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I couldn't even drive it properly. All those years in the back, I thought it would be easy. Then you, you don't know anyone called Melanie. Mum, I was there. They're not mistaken. But why? I was there. And then I went to sleep. And when I woke up, she was dead. And then I, I ran away. Well, have, you, have you told them that? Why not, love? The solicitor told me not to. Well, listen, I'm going to get you someone proper, all right? Because you're getting out of here, Ben. You'll be all right, son. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and, um, thank you for letting us see it. Um, is it... Can you have this? Against all the rules. Mary, would... Mother's pride never killed anyone. Off home, sir. It's quarter to five in the morning. Two murder night and we haven't spoken. What do you want? More men. What do you want more men for? I heard your suspect in the Melanie murder was banged to rights. So I had to use two uniforms to interview him because the three CID boys available are up at the Stockhill estate on the junkie murder. That's just how it is, Box. Meanwhile, you get half the nick out there pulling in 20 drink drives each so that you can get enough detections for your precious government target. Why don't you get it? It's a very simple equation. We miss our targets, they cut our budget. We end up with even less time to do police work. I don't like it either, but I have to make choices. It's the same as health. Health? Shall we keep the old soap liver failure going or shall we save the nine-year-old? We're no different. One pot of money and one pot of coppers. Good night, Box. So the answer is no. The answer is no. You've got to get smart, Ben. I answered no comment. So the time. What's the jury going to make of that? Here's a boy who answers the easy ones and then... Shuts up when they go and get stuff. How does that look? Sorry. Box will do the next interview himself. He's a bit of a rarity. Most bosses don't bother now that everything's taped. But Box still doesn't. Why? Because he's a talented oppressor. Like all good coppers, he does you over inside the rules. He's a, a subtle beast. He seems like a decent man. Like I said, he's subtle. Thank God for the taped interview, eh, Box? Vital protection for you boys. I don't know what you're on about, son. Well, quality villains can't make up the nasty things that policemen have supposedly said to them in interviews well, anymore. Now, what would you know about quality villains, Stone? You're a slappers and dippers man, aren't you? Right, um, thank you. My name is Harry Box, Detective Superintendent. Also present, uh... Constable Karen Briggs, Q485. The table is gone. Detective Superintendent Box believes this creates a less formal atmosphere, which is also why he has a woman police officer present. Apparently, all this makes it more likely a suspect will talk to him. It's a ploy he's fond of using. More women, fewer tables. My name is Ralph Stone, solicitor. Also present is the accused. Ben Coulter. Right, now... I've got to ask you about the signs, and their uh, blood in particular, but first, because I'm a fair man, I'm going to let you know how it's going to look on the science front. We'll have her on you, you on her. We'll have you on the knife, the knife on you. We'll have you on the house, the house on you. We'll have you on the cab, the cab on you. The knife on the cab... Is the... this a question? What I really want to know, Ben, is there anything, 
anything at all that you want to say to me? My client cannot be expected to comment on scientific evidence we don't even have yet. I'm struggling here, Ben. The nice lad but the loving mum who brings him sandwiches is also someone who picks up a complete stranger in the middle of the night. Why? To have sex with her? No. Did you have sex with her? Yes. Look, I'm sorry. Can we stop, please? No, we can't do that, Ben. Not like any of this. I'm not what you're turning me into. Just try to understand, Ben. That's a boy. Can you help me? No comment. The evidence is so strong. You're really going to need to start talking, Ben Coulter. Then charge him. When you have sufficient evidence, you must charge. What's stopping you? He doesn't feel right, does he? You're very proud of your gut and your nose. But neither of them are fancying my boy for this. Are they? Harry Box. Tell the truth. You're the jury, Ben. Run the truth by yourself. Who killed Melanie Lloyd? Is it the boy with the blood all over him and the knife in his pocket and the hopeless taped interview? Or is it someone else? It's not hard, is it? The truth can go to hell. And if you don't get that into your head right now, Forget about the rest of your life. I said five minute checks. Was it changed? What are you reading? Some air. Can we go for a cigarette? I don't smoke. That's the rule. Smoking, yes. Fresh air, no. Can I go for a cigarette? You don't smoke. I've just started. What did your mum say? Did you tell her it wasn't you? Does she believe it? She's my mum. So what's the answer to my question? Your solicitor's upstairs having coffee in the police canteen. <laughs> it's a big club, really, you know, the criminal justice system. And I'm not a member. I don't like the idea of a double life. 
My job is to lock up bad people. I don't see why I want to be friends with anyone who's trying to stop me doing that. So that's why I'm down here with you. And not drinking coffee with Mr. Stone. You shouldn't be doing this, should you? I really, really love my job. But now and again, I get frustrated by the rules. And with the likes of yourself, I would like to draw up all the formal business and just talk. You can cut through everything. What do you mean? This is the most open and shut case that I've handled in a very long time. So why don't you charge me? Because I like you. Because I want it to be over for you. It's something they all say is that there's an immense sense of relief when you tell someone. It's like finding God. He looks like I killed her. That's how it looks. Maybe you didn't mean to. Sometimes stuff just happens. Careless driving. The stoic will be so thrilled it's not sex you're here for. We'll walk away with a slap wrist, okay, Paul? It's Pauline. Good boy. Ben Coulter, Stephen Tysers. I'm Ben Coulter. Oh. I'm your barrister, and this is. You go carry your solicitor. What about Mr. Stone? Your old dad wants to use us. Yes, uh, Mr. Curry here, because he's a solicitor, can't really be frank with you about another member of his profession, but uh, I can, and my five seconds with Mr. Stone just now tells me everything I need to know. What? Well, he's second class. You can smell low-level crime all over him. You're more important than that, Ben. You need a better class of person looking after you. OK. Here's what we do. I'm sorry. I've got some other lawyers now. Oh. Right. OK. 
Okay. Good. I gotta go upstairs and do Paul, Pauline. From Mr. Stone. I don't smoke. Take them. They're currents the way you're going. Hey! Oh, hey! He took the cigarettes. Are you sure? Maybe you're mistaken about that. He took the cigarettes from me! Boy. What gear were you in? Uh, basically the same as I'm in now. I'm sorry? It's Dolce and Gabbana. <laughs> Three points on your licence and £100, all one day. Yes, Madam Clark. Number 13 on your list, Madam. Ben Coulter, charged with murder. Mr. Coulter was found three streets from the crime scene in possession of the knife which has been identified as belonging to the premises where the crime took place. The knife has blood on it. Is there a bail application? Two grounds of objection, failure to appear and fear that he could make further offences. Mr Tyson. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even think about making a bail application in a case like this. However, I have a great advantage over everyone in this court. I've spent quality time with my client this morning. I've looked into his eyes and seen something very straightforward and clear. This is a young man determined to prove his innocence. People like that do not run away. They do not skip bail. Why? Because they want to get into court and prove to the world that they did not do what is alleged against them. You can't give him bail. You can't! Bail is a right and not a privilege. There have to be reasons for refusing it. I can see none. I've listened very carefully to Mr. Tysurst. Bail is refused on both grounds. Mr. Coulter, you'll be remanded in custody. Let's please, Madam Clark. Can I see my son then, please? Will you let me see my son, please? Dad. Will you let me see my son? Dad. Dad. Dad, Dad. Keep your head down. Don't talk to anyone unless you have to. And here's my card. Just in case you change your mind, okay? Not often I see you giving advice for nothing. Yeah, well. How much will you make off a decent murder if it goes all the way? Just wondering. So 